So, Future, aka Future Hendrix, aka The Wizard, whatever you want to call him, has finally dropped a new album called High of Life. I like to call Future one of the founding fathers of trap, I mean sort of, because he helped make the way for these druggy lyrics, these spacey beats that we now hear um, today in trap music. I mean, think about it. He made so much noise with T2L to really help shape a lot of what trap is today. And you know, making noise as well with Mask Off, with insanely high and insanely popular track that I'm pretty sure everybody knows about this point. And yeah, just making loads of music that have just been iconic in trap music. So last year, Future dropped an album called The Wizard, I believe, which I wasn't like I didn't get to listen to the album, but the single just didn't really catch my attention. And he also dropped uh, an EP later that year in summer, which was called Save Me. And I think Save Me was, eh, it's I, I mean, it wasn't like my favorite thing in the world from Future, but I mean, it did have some bops in there, but it wasn't like anything mind blowing or anything. The teaser track, Life Is Good, featuring Drake. Uh, I thought it was an okay track, you know. Um, I think Drake, unfortunately, just shown, shined more than uh, Future. I think Future's part was kind of like a little bit sloppy, you know. I just didn't mess with Future's part that much in the second half of the track. How it switched up was, I think, a little bit just random. You know, just a little bit weird for Future just to do that. So yeah, fast forward to now, and we get to hear a full-length album from Future himself. 21 tracks, 1 hour and 16 minutes. And uh, yeah, what do I think of this album? I think it's... Okay, I mean, I didn't come here with high expectations. I kind of come here with low expectations because seeing the track list or just seeing us so many tracks and you know, like 20 or 21 tracks kind of had me scared a bit. I was just going to get super bored, but I actually was wrong. I mean, there's actually some bobs and exciting moments in this album. The first track, Trapped in the Sun, and we get to hear more of just Future's typical lyrics, you know, a little bit of flexing and all, which I just, I don't know, I wasn't a huge fan of it. I thought it was an okay track, but I just track the beat, like just the whole atmosphere. I think, I think it sets the tone for almost the entire album. It's dark, it's atmospheric, you know, there's some strings there. It sets the, it sets the atmosphere you know it's dark it's grim you know it's uh, a little bit more intense this time there's some strings playing in the background it's a little bit more spacious and the next track high tech tech we get to hear more of a bop really I mean, this, is, this is a trap banger in my opinion i like the bouncy traps that go here uh, his flow the high tech tech and the little melody that's playing that gets intenser when it when it switches up i think is pretty cool i like it it's it's really diverse it's really different and uh, yeah we get to hear more of his future flexing i guess you could say in touch the sky we get to hear more of a i guess typical trap beat i mean the melody is a little bit just common at this point so the little piano that's creeping in that sounds kind of haunted the features in this album are actually pretty decent i mean the travis scott feature i thought was okay actually future outshines him a bit um i think that travis i mean as i was saying his verse is okay but uh i think the the delay and the effects that they played in his voice is just a little bit too much it kind of feels like it's overwhelming and a bit hard to hear sometimes and just annoying because you just hear it in the background but uh yeah i like the little melody that they have there the do 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 do, 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 do. It was a really catchy melody. Uh, yeah, I like how Future and Travis just have just show so much emotion. The chemistry is just so together. I like it. And another reason why I like this track is because the drums are hitting super hard. That kick is hitting super hard. That bass is insane. It is thick. You know, it just it the kick is just punching so hard. It's it's also like just. A thing that just catches your eye, catches your attention immediately. Talking about good chemistry, Lil Uzi Vert is actually a feature in this album. Um, I think this track sounds like an eternal take, like leftover, I guess you can say. Even though I think it's a decent track. Um, some, I guess you could, I guess I could find why people don't like this track because they could say, oh well, it just kind of ruins the atmosphere. It isn't as dark as the first track. But I personally liked it. I think the beat is colorful. It's vibrant. You know, it kind of reminded me a little bit of Futsal Shuffle. A little bit with the little plucky melody that plays. I think a uh, little Uzi verse I was saying with Future, the chemistry is just so together, how they match your flows and all. I just think it's it's really cool. And also Lil Uzi Vert is a really funny line about vegans, which <laughs> I don't know. It's a really funny, it's a pretty funny line that I have in my mind. But also another funny line 
is the coronavirus line that featured lays in here. A track that was kind of interesting, had an interesting idea was writing strikers. I like how the beat was kind of dark, a little bit more spacious. And I like the switch up that was in the, in the end, but I think that the guitar that was playing was a little bit too detuned. Just catch my attention a little bit too much. I thought it was an okay uh, track, you know, just him too, just talking about the gang and all that stuff, how, uh, how stressful it was for him. Speaking about gang and all that stuff, one of my is I guess one of the deeper cuts in this album. He talks about more about his friends, you know, that had just been living in the hood. You know, living in the hood, such a tragic place for him, how it was just dark in him. I think the beat matches pretty well. Uh, I think the drums were okay, the little 8 808 that just kind of like glitches a bit. And the, yeah, I just, I think his delivery could have been a little bit better. It's like a little bit monotone in this one, but one of my. What am I, what I, you know, I just think something was missing, you know, like the, I guess he could have been a little bit more emotional in this track. He could have like added a little bit more emotion. Another track that I guess is more personal is uh, Posted with Demons, him talking about his addiction with drugs, how he's trying to combat it, you know, how the drugs are kind of like demons and just the stuff that are just getting in his way, you know, I guess personal stuff. I like the little melody that plays in the background. I like the drums. Uh, and I also, what really catched my attention was a line that I think is really true. I, it was a wave line that I think he said that uh, he made the wave and now he has to buy a boat. Cause you know, I have to ride that way. The next track, Hard to Choose One, which has this haunting melody. Sometimes it just goes like this little reverse thing. This little piano that like, just creeps in and then like kind of changes. You can like see these keys that go on a higher pitch, which I think 808 Mafia produces track. Uh, the 808 is booming in this one. And uh, yeah, I think it's an okay track. I think uh, Future's flow could have been a little bit better. Another feature from this album is Young Boy, which I don't know, it's okay. I mean, the track Trillionaire that he's in, uh, I think it's just, okay uh just not there's not a lot from this track it's two minutes and 30 seconds it's eh, just i'm not gonna i'm probably not gonna play it again they basically just talk about wanting to be trillionaires i guess even though they have lots of money so there's a young thug feature in this one and really i like i personally like young thug i mean i like how he uses his voice you know there's so much energy in it how he just changes it and all which is Super interesting, and sometimes Larry can be a little bit creepy, not gonna lie. But when I saw the like, Young Thug feature, you know, I was like super hyped to heart. It was called Harlem Shake, and I don't think this thing's gonna go wild, but surprisingly, it is underwhelming. Really, really underwhelming. One of the worst tracks in this album. Uh, Young Thug could have just used a little bit more energy. He was a little bit too monotone in this track. I mean, just a little bit underwhelming compared to features that he's done in the past. I feel like Young Thug could have just been a bit better in this one, you know? And yeah, Future also just kind of sounds boring. Just the whole track just sounds boring, really. Another track that's boring is Up the River. I mean, I guess what I was trying to say in this track, it's like the river, I guess. It's gonna set him free. He's gonna be a free man. Just get, I guess, free of all the stuff that he's done in the past. I, I guess, I don't know. But just the whole track just kind of sounds a little bit too long and just skippable. Another track that I think is personal is Pray for a Key, which he talks about, you know, praying for a key, praying for a way out of the drug, the drug wars, you know, the mafia, all that stuff. I like that track. I just think it just set such a personal, sort of dark tone in here. How he raps about all the stuff that is happening in his life. As I was saying, the drugs, the gang, and all that stuff is him wanting to get a way out. As the key is like kind of like his way out of all that gang violence. A track that is super boring as well. As I was saying with the Harlem Shake and Up the River is Outer Space Bay. I'm, we all know what that means. But it's another track that just feels pointless. Another track that I could have. That if it was removed, I just would have been happy and just because I don't, I'm never gonna, re, I'm probably just not gonna replay this track again. As I was saying with the Harlem Shake and of the River one, I don't know, it's just slow, it's too boring, it's just skippable, really. Another personal track is Accepting My Flaws. It's him basically accepting his flaws, as I was saying in the title, you know, it's just personal issues, relationship issues, you know, trying him trying to make up for his past mistakes. As I was saying, there are some bops in here inside of the personal cuts as Tycoon. Which is, I like how the metaphor uses of him comparing himself to a tycoon. I think it's pretty smooth. And the track that I guess is mostly filled with features is 100 Shooters of Meek Mill and Doughboy, I believe is his name. Uh, I think that track is actually really, really good. It's a bop. I like how everybody's flow is on point. Meek Mill 
has such a savage flow. I, I think he starts to track Unbeliever. He's the second verse, I'm not sure, but his flow is so aggressive. It's so, just so tight. I love it. Everybody's flow in here is good. Uh, the boy is also really, really good in this track. The mixes in this album are pretty clean. As I was saying, the booming trap drums in some of these tracks are pretty good. The super punchy kicks and 808s and just drums overall in this album are really clean. They're cleanly mixed. They're clean produced. The tracks in here, as I was saying, they're clean. They're sparkling clean, actually. Um, it, it just feels so atmospheric. The beats, you know, it's their feel uh, mixed really well. They feel just complete and all and uh, yeah i had to give future credit for that i mean the producers here really went off take heath and 100 shooters which was a banger the rapid hi-hats the rapid drums you know but yeah some cons that i have in this album is that there's some tracks in here that i guess are just kind of fillers up the river harlem shake uh you know those tracks just just kind of feel bland you know just kind of feel like it's just empty you know like they're missing some there's just some tracks that are just mad they're okay they could have been better they could have expanded so i guess more but overall i think future like as the main artist obviously uh, i think he did a really really good job sometimes i was saying he overshines his features which i think is a really good thing i kind of wish in this album you get to hear more of like i was saying features a uh, personal cut but uh, yeah overall what did i get this album a 6 out of 10. I think it's okay. It's actually better as I was saying in the beginning. Better than what I thought it would be. If you guys like this video, leave a like. You know, uh, comment down below. What do you think of this album? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, please share this video. And uh, yeah, see you guys next time. Peace out.